We have before us two appeals, one from England and Wales and one from Scotland. They both involve the same issue, whether it was lawful for the Prime Minister to advise Her Majesty to authorise the prorogation of Parliament by order in Council. Our case is that when the Prime Minister exercises his admittedly broad discretionary power to advise Her Majesty on prorogation, it is an improper purpose for him to be motivated by a wish to avoid parliamentary control over the policies of his government. The length of the prorogation in this case is important, but it is important not because a prorogation may only be for one week or three weeks. That is not our case. The length of the prorogation is relevant because the exceptional length of the prorogation in this case is strong evidence that the Prime Minister's motive was to silence Parliament for that period because he sees Parliament as an obstacle to the furtherance of his political aims. The length of the prorogation is relevant because the exceptional length of the prorogation in this case is strong evidence that the Prime Minister's motive was to silence Parliament for that period because he sees Parliament as an obstacle to the furtherance of his political aims. It is, we say, a remarkable feature of these proceedings that the Prime Minister has not made a witness statement explaining why uh, he decided to advise Her Majesty to prorogue Parliament for a period as long as five weeks. <coughs> and that is even though uh, we made very clear in commencing these proceedings uh, that an important part of our case is that the Prime Minister's advice to Her Majesty was motivated, or at least strongly influenced, by the Prime Minister's desire to prevent the risk, as he saw it, of Parliament damaging government policy. The issues in these proceedings are very far from uh, academic. The Prime Minister and the Advocate General uh, say at paragraph 77 of their written case that there is no authority which supports the proposition that the exercise of a power to prorogue the legislature is amenable to judicial review. Uh, our response, which I will develop, is that there are many precedents establishing the relevant principles of our constitutional law. There has hitherto been no need for any court to apply those principles in the context of the prerogative power to prorogue because no prime minister has abused his powers in the manner which we allege in at least the last 50 years, that is back to the development of modern principles of uh, judicial review. The executive is answerable to parliament. And this legal concept of parliamentary sovereignty is not confined to cases where the executive ignores or frustrates an act of parliament, it must also apply to cases, and this is a unique case to answer 
uh, my Lord, Lord Calmworth, it's never before occurred. Uh, it must also apply to cases where the executive takes a decision with the purpose or effect of removing the ability of Parliament to legislate. And the conclusion is at page 3092. Indeed, it's a greater breach, or could be a greater breach, of parliamentary sovereignty to prevent Parliament from legislating as it sees fit than it is for the executive to defy a particular law. 